Hi, I'm Lou, and I am a poly hobbyist. Chances are you are too. Today I'm going to be talking about the Visual Studio Code ROS extension for ROS1. Topics I'm going to cover today, specifically launching VS Code from a ROS environment, overview of some of the UI features, overview of commands that are available in the command palette, as well as editing URDF. So let's get started. We're going to start in our terminal window and ensure that ROS has been sourced. For me, I have this as part of my startup script, so you can see that we have ROS environment variables. The important ones, the ones that the Visual Studio Code extension keys off of, is ROS master URI and the ROS distro. If either of those missing, then the extension won't start. So make sure that they are actually part of your environment. Uh, this can hap uh, fail to start up if you don't source the batch file or if your ROS install is broken, uh, which has happened to me several times on the Linux side. So uh, make sure that those are set up correctly. I'm going to CD into a workspace. Um, the other thing that the Visual Studio Code ROS extension keys off of for ROS1 is that there is a Catkin workspace file. If that file is missing, go ahead and create it by echoing something or, or uh, touching it on Linux. Once you have that, then you can go ahead and start code on that workspace. Now, Visual Studio Code will inherit the environment, so it will detect ROS based on that environment. So we're going to look at a couple of things in Visual Studio Code. So the if ROS is if the ROS extension is initialized, you will see a token at the bottom that says the ROS version that, that's detected, so ROS one, uh, as well as the distribution. If it is in the process of finding this, you'll actually see a. Um, timer icon that shows up here. On the other side, you will see that we have a configuration. Now this is what Visual Studio Code detects as the configuration for a workspace based on a couple of heuristics, but this uh, connects to debugging, which will be another video. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up the command palette and turn on screencast mode so you can see what I'm clicking on. So to open up the command palette, you press Control shift p and then I'm going to start the screencast mode. So you can see Control shift p If you type ROS, you'll actually see quite a few options uh, that are related to ROS. So the first one I'm going to show you is um, ROS start. Selecting ROS start will actually launch a ROS daemon in the background, uh, allowing you to communicate from the front end to the back end. Once it's started, you can see that the checkbox uh, is next to the version and distro at the bottom. Selecting this icon now will actually bring up a, a ROS core status, which has some parameters about ROS itself, uh, some of the launch parameters, the topics that are currently active, uh, and then service that are available. Going down the line, we're going to take a look at stop. This is how you can stop the ROS graph, and you can see that it goes back to an X, meaning that ROS has not been started. So I'm going to go ahead and start that again. So let's bring up the next one. You can get to the show status uh, from the command prompt as well. Uh, there's update C++ property, so if you have a C++ ROS project, what this will do is it will update the C++ properties JSON in the VS Code subdirectory, applying all of the known include files, as well as set up the browsing database. And this is important for uh, IntelliSense. So if you want to say do msg dot, uh, you'll see that there's uh, all of the message parameters here. Okay, so now we're going to, uh, to show building. If you press Control shift b it will bring up the build menu. And we inject both cat can make as well as cat can make isolated. 
when you select that, we actually will source the ROS environment, uh, source the local environment, run the build. And you can see that this build succeeded. If there's an error, you can select control and click on the file where the error is and it will highlight that error and allow you to fix it. So let's go ahead and remove that. If you have a Python project, there is also a Python ROS entry for updating the Python path. And this will uh, include various Python dependencies in your project. We talked about show status, uh, creating a terminal. So this creates a ROS terminal using your current terminal, terminal emulator. In this case, I'm using Power, PowerShell, but you can also select uh, Bash on Linux or Command Prompt on Windows. This actually opens the ROS terminal in your remote side. So if you're uh, operating over SSH or in a container, this actually will open up the ROS terminal in that location. Uh, that's uh, for now, it's actually just opening that terminal locally. That's the same as if we had used the same commands in the terminal we launched from. Finally, I want to actually show you the URDF editor. So if you go to um, a URDF file, inside of a ROS project, and that's the important thing, is it has to be inside of a ROS project. You can go ahead and select either a URDF or a Zacro file, bring up the Control-Shift-P command palette, and look for URDF. What this does is it uses the ROS web tools and hosts it inside of a, a uh, web view, and you can navigate around, scrolling in, spinning and editing your file. So if, for example, you want to change the location of a wheel. Uh, let's say we're going to make it uh, 0.1 centimeters away. You can see that as soon as you press the save button, we'll reload it uh, and re-render it. And it's pretty quick. Anyway, this, those are an overview of the ROS commands available to you. Uh, in a future video, I'll talk about debugging C++ and Python code, uh, which is where a lot of the ROS extension does shine. Thank you very much.